We all love and remember Nintendo Power fondly. For a brief time in the 80s and 90s, Nintendo Power had the trifecta. It was a perfect balance of news, entertainment, and help for the games of the time. I love the comic strips they had too. The most popular one was Howard and Nestor, and there was also this weird little crazy comic about Mario and Luigi. Without really knowing it, it was the first foray into Japanese manga that most of us had. Manga is the Japanese word for comics, in case you don't have the internet to learn that. The art style was weird, cute, and very exaggerated. While we were reading these, there was a much bigger series of Mario manga going on in Japan. They were full books, individually sold with over 40 volumes of complete stories. The books were published in Japan by Kodansha Media, and are referred to as the KC Mario comic series. The first comics started in 1989. They were collected from weekly comics that were first printed in Bon Bon magazine. They didn't just do Mario, there was a range of characters like Gundam. Wait, they did Mega Man too? Oh, I gotta find that! Anyway, the Mario comics ended in 1998, and now this collection of books is all that's left. The comics don't seem to have a lot of editorial control from Nintendo. The characters don't look like the official versions of themselves for one, and some of the scenes and language are not for kids. These are clearly some things that would never make the cut in Nintendo Power. All of the comics promoted the newest Mario games at the time. Some of the stories were for Dr. Mario, Super Mario World, Super Mario Kart, Wario's Woods, Super Mario 64, and Yoshi's Story. One of the more funny and strange ones was Super Mario USA, known to us as Super Mario Bros. 2. Of course there's that whole Mario 2 Doki Doki Panic story that's very well known, but what you might forget is that this game was re-released in Japan as a separate spin-off, and was marketed as Mario's American Adventure. Strange, I know, but in the fall of 1992, Super Mario USA hit the Famicom, and this comic helped promote it. Let's take a look inside and see what the story is all about. One thing I like besides the funny cover with Princess Peach as the Statue of Liberty is that the first few pages give a little detail about what Super Mario USA looks like and how to play the game. Remember that if Super Mario USA was a new game to you, you'd need to know the characters. And this handy guide at the beginning of the book helps you out. All of the character names are different in Japan, but the most notable is that Birdo is named Catherine, while Ostro is actually called Birdo. Maybe the writers of this book didn't know about that typo in the credits or the instruction manual of the game. Toad is called Kinopio. Wart is called Mamu. And Shy Guys are called Heiho. Sparks have the same name. If you forget the rest, that's okay. The story starts out with a zoom in on Earth in the USA. Are they all sleeping together? In a big pile? What's that? Ah oh well, it's just the setup of the story. Mario and the rest say that they are the American version of themselves. And they start out working on a farm. Well, it is a dream, you know, so weird stuff can happen. Peach finds Mouser stealing seeds from the farmhouse and chases him. Mario and Luigi misunderstand and think the mouse in question is the mouse from Mario Paint. It is 1992, after all. They chase him through a tunnel and he runs up a mountain. This is where Mario and Luigi discover the vegetables and cherries found in Mario USA. In fact, the first radish Mario sees talks to him and tells him to pull him up and throw him to keep Mario and everyone safe in this area. Shy guys, called Hey Ho, are walking around and Mario takes the advice to fend them off. One Hey Ho, or Shy Guy, surrenders and offers to help Mario find Mouser and take them up the mountain. Mario had a bean in his pocket and lets a big vine sprout out to let them climb up. Once on top of the clouds they find Catherine, or Birdo, and then we see her for the first time. Or him? Or it? I don't know. I don't read Wikipedia like it's the Bible just to keep up with this stuff. This scene might seem kind of strange, because it's not in the game, but this scene parodies the Super Mario USA TV commercial, which would have aired at the same time as the comics were being printed. It's weird in its own way. 
Kinopio slash Toad notices that there's an escape door, but needs a crystal to open it. How does he know that? Did he read the instruction manual? Anyway, they fight, get the crystal, and pass through. They catch up with Mouser, have a bomb fight from stage 1-3, and blow him up. A snake takes the seeds and runs away. What were these things called again? Stage 2 is just like you'd think. Bezos, Pokies, and Phantos in the desert. It's basically the four of them chasing to get the seeds back. But some funny things happen here. Peach keeps eating cherries and causes a star man to pop up, which gets them out of trouble. Mario tries to take off one of the masks, but the story gets a little deeper, as the Bezos say they are really subcon people and are forced to wear the mask because Wart has taken over the land of subcon and they can't take them off until he's defeated. Is that anywhere in the Mario canon? Oh yeah! It actually said that in the Super Mario Bros. 2 American Manual. It said that Wart placed the subcons under an evil spell. In the manual to Doki Doki Panic, it doesn't mention the mask being cursed. But what do you expect? In 1987, you were supposed to buy them and wear them. So they had to be a fun thing. So the scene gets interrupted by Pidget throwing a POW block to the ground. Mario tackles him and steals the flying carpet. They use it to enter the pyramid. Inside there, they find some mummies. But wait, there were mummies in Super Mario 2? No, it's just Sniffits in disguise. Pretty clever, I'd say. What's more clever, in a very meta way, is Mario and the others jump on their heads to escape, keeping the game physics intact in this crazy comic world. Sorry, manga. They meet Catherine again, and this time, she proudly exclaims that she has to be a girl, because she can lay eggs. She's pretty friendly this time around, and agrees to take them around the area. There's also a strange scene where Luigi hits on Catherine and calls her beautiful. She points them to the door, but it's locked, so they need a key. If you've played Super Mario 2, you know what this means. Fanto injures Mario, and they say they need to go to subspace to get a mushroom to power him up. By the way, if they're in a strange new land, how do they know that they need to travel to subspace to find a mushroom? In one of the funniest and weirdest inside jokes, Peach pulls up a magic lamp, which was the item in Doki Doki Panic to go to subspace. Catherine says that won't work, and she has the real potion to travel to subspace, and that she went to the bathroom in the magic lamp. They get the mushroom, power Mario up, and go through the door and meet Triclyde and engage in a pretty dramatic battle. Triclyde is defeated, and Peach takes the seeds back, only to be kidnapped by Wart and taken away. Stage 3 is the final battle. Mario, Luigi, and Toad are on their way to save Peach. Meanwhile, Wart orders Peach to cook dinner for him. And after he eats it, he throws it up because it's full of vegetables. Mario, Luigi, and Toad get closer, so Wart orders an evacuation and sends everyone through a warp zone. As the three of them get closer, they come to Catherine's house. Luigi tries again to flirt with her, to get her to go along with them. But this time she changes her feelings on a dime, like a real girl by the way, and thinks it won't work out anymore. Mario offers Catherine a chance to date Yoshi, who Catherine thinks is pretty hot. This part is just classic. There's a cutaway to Yoshi making cookies, and he somehow hears this and starts freaking out at the prospect of having to go out with her. If only he knew they'd be partners in Mario Kart in the future. With the date all set, she lets them take her rocket up to Wart's castle. They battle Claw Grip and Fry Guy, and end up using Fry Guy to boil Claw Grip and eat him. To defeat Fry Guy, Catherine goes to the bathroom on him. I guess the magic lamp was full. Mario finally makes it to Wart's chamber, with Peach atop the dream machine. The battle ends with Mario prying Wart's mouth open, and Peach raining down vegetables from under her dress. It makes Mario get a nosebleed, and if you've read manga, you know what that means. And if you don't know what that means, 
It means that Mario got to see the Royal Peach! Anyway, with Wart defeated, the masks fell off, and the subcons were free. Peace was once again returned to the land. That ends the main story, but there's a second smaller story which is just weird all around. Mario, Luigi, Toad, and Peach go to a casino run by Wart. They dress up in power-up suits from Super Mario Bros. 3, and later as Sailor Moon. The story ends by Mario beating Wart in a game of roulette. So if you enjoy weird, off-model character designs, silly wordplay, and having Birdo going to the bathroom on everything, take a voyage down to your local library, because it's all in books.